You're in this very room, a wonderful apostolic man who came to the Feast of Tabernacles with, he was there yesterday too, um, with about 50 or so Mexican Christians that had used all their savings to make that one trip to the Holy Land of their life. And they came to the Feast of Tabernacles, they saw all the wonderful praises of all these nations, and then he took them to Jericho. And he explained what God did to the walls of Jericho through prayer and praise. And he said to me here in this room, and I became so thankful, because for years I have prayed in the name of the Lord Jesus against the power and principality of Islam. As I know, unless that's bound, there will be no peace between the Arabs and the Jews. That's the great troublemaker that drives the Arabs to put such swords today while they say, Oh, Akbar, deep into the backs of ladies, men and women and children. And he was here and he said to me, as I was explaining at that side of Jericho what God did through prayer and praise, I suddenly saw a wall in front of me, huge, thick and high. And God spoke, the wall that you see is the wall of Islam. As surely as I have brought down the wall of communism in all of East Europe, I am determined to break down this wall. And then he saw, and it, it, for any Christian that has anything, what can I do? Okay, he speaks all these truths, but what can I do? Because I'm a very pragmatic, practical person. I want to know what can I do, not just what's the truth about it. I believe he will be quickened to know that he can do something if he cleans up his life so that he can become a holy intercessor for God. And he saw this wall and he saw a crack. And when the Persian Gulf War came, God said, the crack you saw on the wall of Islam was my battle against Saddam Hussein. And I got so rejoicing in my heart because I knew that towards the end of the time of waiting that the Americans gave Saddam Hussein from August till January, he became more and more a faithful Muslim. He called himself the most faithful servant of Allah. When I was in America, I saw on CNN somebody shooting off a rocket and he wrote in, in chalk on it, Saddam, if Allah doesn't listen to you, try Jesus. And, uh, 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 but there was something that I heard now from a priest in Jordan. He said to me, never did the Muslims were so weak on the Ramadan fast as the months of Ramadan after the Persian Gulf War because they felt let down by Allah. It was the first break in how can this be? If this is the first, the most faithful servant of Allah, Saddam Hussein even said that he had a vision of, of, of Muhammad. He went five times and he prayed and, and he was completely obliterated with his military power. Then many Muslims begin to say what I'm saying to them. If you do go on in trying to curse yourself by stirring up this jihad all over the Middle East against Israel, I prophesy to you, you are going to see the same God's judgment that was on Saddam Hussein upon Damascus, upon all of your cities, till you learn that God has brought the Jewish people back not to curse you but to bless you if you will only let them have that little piece of land that is only 160 40th of what you have. The Arabs got 640 times more land than the little piece given uh, to Isaac. Small as Vermont or New Jersey. And um, the, uh, the Arabs from Tunisia, Morocco, Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, Bahrain, Iraq, got 640 times more, which is twice the size of the United States. If the Arabs will say, God, thank you for what you gave us. Thank you for the oil and the wells that has brought us. Help us to accept our brother Isaac in the land you gave to them. But that will only happen when we Christians pray for the peace of Jerusalem and cut off this principality of jihad by true intercessory prayer. Thank <laughs> you.